I'd like to give uh, the, uh, the, the floor now to Mr. Martin Ludwig from the Fruit Growers Union, who will tell us something about the, uh, something about the specific you know, problems in that area. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and also for invitation to this event. Uh, during uh, the, the, our work today here, we have heard uh, many things about the Green Deal, what is in store for us, etc. And uh, I dare to show uh, on some smaller commodity, um, short-term history, the presence, and, and what we can expect in the context of the new agricultural policy, uh, namely in the uh, fruit growing uh, industry in the Czech Republic. I do not want to talk uh, about long history. I'd like just to say that um, fruit growing uh, in the Czech Republic is not anything new. It's, it has a um, 100 year long tradition. It's agricultural production which belongs to our conditions. As I mentioned, the short term history is not very joyful in the growth uh, in, in the fruit growing industry you can see this on this chart showing the development the areas of orchard in the Czech Republic and for the uh, past 30 years I have to note this sad fact that 42% uh, of areas of fruit orchards has disappeared from our uh, land, uh, landscape which is more than 10,000 hectares and I will get two reasons you can see that in three stages in the 1990s it was well, unclear composition of land and it was difficult to plan the culture cultures and so seeding, etc. Then a positive uh, trend came and there was, there was no down, no longer downtrend. And um, the year uh, 2017, very fundamental for our commodity, you will remember a declaration of Russian embargo on a number of foodstuffs and uh, the fruit industry suffered most uh, from this, not because we would have been exporting to Russia uh, significant amounts, but we, uh, in our close vicinity is one of the biggest uh, exporters uh, is Poland. Uh, before 2014, explo uh, exported to Russia uh, 4 million uh, tons, uh, which remains uh, now on the uh, European market. And uh, Poland or Europe, uh, after that Russian political decision, uh, have been able to find new markets, which log logic, uh, uh, led to overpressure, uh, misuse of situation of uh, food chains, uh, drop of prices, uh, economic uh, loss of uh, situation, and actual and the growers uh, responded by reducing the area of uh, growing, and it, it was a geological response to that uh, slowed down. As you can see, the production in 1990s was still growing, and uh, somewhere around the period of our joining the, of the European Union, it started to uh, go down, and the trend has been here so far. And unfortunately, the, there will be still a downfall in the production when the, the areas are uh, less and less uh, uh, then of course the, it has some logic consequences and our production will go down as well. Uh, some sh uh, actual recent history how about the uh, imports of table apples uh, and breakthrough 2005-2006 uh, uh, happened. It was not caused by our joining of the European Union though it may seem so because by opening our, our borders uh, nothing, not, not much changed because our country had advantageous conditions with countries of the EU and could import uh, without uh, drastic limitations. But at that period, there was an important growth of uh, retail chains uh, on the Czech uh, market, and, uh, and the chart demonstrates clearly how uh, they have behaved on our car, uh, market, preferring imported products from the original Euro, uh, EU. 15, EU 15. Uh, over the past years, there has been uh, actually a drop again in our production, but let's not be mistaken. And by the year 2020, we don't have the statistic for 2021, but you see an increase. Uh, we heard about the question of self sufficiency. Yes or no? What is self sufficiency? What should be the level of it? It means uh, not that we should have everything in 100%. On the other hand, why not? Many countries have more, they export. But in the case of fruit and vegetable situation is uh, uh, really uh, desperate uh, in a 
the, and the red plums, we are at about 50 percent, but pears as one of our traditional uh, species, fruit species, we are only at 25 percent. Similar situation in vegetables. We could see a new expression also from the mouth of our politician, that is safety. When I uh, went through the coalition agreement uh, published a few days ago, uh, there was a sentence uh, there that in commodities where it makes sense in our conditions, they uh, want to uh, increase uh, food safety. It will be good uh, because we must realize that we, we are at some boundary line uh, when some commodities, foodstuffs, maybe even uh, we, we can be uh, maybe lacking. Uh, of course, in normal function of the market, this will not so. If we are to import that, uh, traders will do that, uh, they'll be happy. And, but we experienced a situation during the COVID pandemic that there was a problem with uh, Perme uh, actually uh, threat of uh, closing the borders. And all of a sudden, people under the pressure of a new situation started to buy uh, more foodstuffs and we experienced something that had not been here for a long time. That some that were actually empty empty shelves uh, of some uh, goods. And like cauliflower, I can remember it was sold um, for 100 crowns in our uh, shops. Many uh, people uh, were surprised. Uh, but, this, you know, let's not be mistaken, the situation is such miserable situation in many commodities for the Czech Republic. So this can happen in a few days. If uh, borders are closed in five, ten days, many types of goods and commodities will be missing in our shops. And uh, it is important also for future governments to realize that it's not a question of self-sufficiency in a number of goods and commodities, but rather safety. And I expect the new government, when they put included it in, in their coalition agreement, they will provide safety. And in the context of such safety, they will actually channel support to um, commodities which are in a bad situation in terms of self-sufficiency uh, or safety. When we are in uh, retail chains, because fruits and vegetables are a commodity which goes uh, directly to the market, these are not farmers with processing industry, these are those uh, who, in order to be successful, must be really successful in food chains, because 80 percent of all uh, food spending are spent by people in this few uh, uh, retail uh, chains like these. You can see a chart that I uh, made on the basis of the data available from the Czech Statistics Office. And these are data about how are people um, from what they spent in shops, uh, what actually income will get to farmers. And this is an example of apples. From what people pay in shops, 30 percent will be received uh, by suppliers. I'm not saying farmers. These, those are the people who not only ha uh, actually grow it, but also um, have warehouses, uh, do the packaging, uh, transport, uh, distribution centers. Etc. If I clear these things, the uh, actually fruit grower that planted the trees that waited for years for them to start uh, bear fru fruiting, uh, to care technologies, harvesting, etc. And when they get the apples uh, in, in the box uh, in shelf, they get 20% of what the, all the citizens pay in shops. These are data, the official statistic. It's a really um, miserable situation, which is not a source of concern only for us, but uh, many uh, farmers in Europe, and I use data my colleagues in Germany who uh, say to uh, German consumers uh, how much from, uh, of their spending for foodstuffs ends up in the pockets of farmers. It's a ridiculous amount. This is an example of breakfast. Rich German breakfast means just the one euro in the pockets of uh, farmers, but the basic experience from this image is that uh, whereas 40 years ago, uh, uh, farmers got 48 percent of what was spent by consumers. Today, it's only 23 percent of what they get. So this is a situation uh, that we should deal with at the European level, uh, because the retail chain uh, actually torture the farmers, they reduce their income and they, re they reduce the harvest and logically use less uh, fertilizers in a situations 
or they increase the fertilizers rather to get to some uh, economic uh, plus values. <laughs> but when he now reflected to check a uh, situation, a long-term chart between the consumer and farmer's price of commodities, you can see clearly how uh, actually the gap is uh, opening wide between what the uh, farmer gets and uh, what the retail chain uh, gets. Uh, Yes, it is the uh, retail chains. Uh, when I uh, uh, actually set aside the 1990s, when there was still centralized economy of over uh, 10 years from uh, 2010 to 2020, the gap opened wide again. So it's not only something that would be just a historical method, it's something that continues. Uh, what the retail chains uh, tell us, or the trade chains, they like to uh, say how they support the Czech economy, the Czech farmers, uh, food making industry, it's just advertising, it's uh, marketing, we read it every day on leaflets, and we get those leaflets in our, in our mailboxes. So this is a situation a week ago, two weeks ago, macro uh, cow flunt, uh, the, uh, retail stores, they uh, sell uh, apples from Poland at the present time. I talked about the long year crisis with the old, uh, close to the Russian market. For 35 cents, it's under, co under the cost. Uh, it's a marketing move, but well planned uh, uh, on the basis of some uh, leaflet promotion or uh, poster promotion. Uh, I don't want to say that there is no free market in Europe. You can uh, go to France, Italy, uh, supermarkets. Uh, can you find uh, apples from Poland for such a price for consumers. When the truck goes here, it goes far, a little bit further. Uh, the costs are just a little bit higher. You won't find that because the behavior of uh, the retail chains in the east, because in this regard we belong to the east rather than the, the, the center, uh, it's different than Western Europe. It's maybe because the politicians in Western markets are able to get the retail chain on the same level. So if you want to have a bite of the big uh, consumer um, um, cake of, uh, where our, our consumers uh, spend money. You need to support our economy. And this was underscored by the Aldi um, uh, chain yesterday who uh, said or that they would buy uh, exclusively German pork uh, from Germany because they realize the critical situation of pork breeders. They want to help them. And they you know that you could uh, liquidate uh, uh, the German uh, uh, breeders and uh, and producers uh, that could be uh, reflected in prices. Though these are quite the same chains as here, but they still uh, the, those that are here still need to take some lessons from their parents. A few words about the Green Deal or what is in store for us. Let me remind also that at the uh, Czech Republic level, we still have a strategy, ministry strategy by the year 2030, which is adopted uh, um, by the government five years ago. And in, in the context of preparation of uh, the new strategic plan, the consumer policy is forgotten. I just want to say that last year we had in that national strategy, we should have uh, 15,000 hectares uh, orchards, fruit orchards, and we had uh, uh, like 1,500 less of them. And nothing indicates that the, we would be able to fulfill the quotas of uh, hectares. I just want to say that the previous governments were not in, able to support the sector, so we could some how eliminate this negative trend. With regard to Green Deal, it was mentioned a reduction of uh, preparations uh, called environmental friendly uh, farming, etc. I would like to open this actually uh, image where I'm missing, once the thing is missing, this is how it is presented for Europe, accessible, uh, healthy, affordable uh, foodstuff. This is what we want. What I miss here is transport. There is mass transport, but uh, transport of products. So I raise a question whether it is not better in countries which are able to grow those commodities uh, efficiently and they are really dependent on imports, which uh, deepens transport, carbon, uh, food
footprint, etc., whether it will be better perhaps to target the new uh, uh, common economic policy to production on site, not just speaking about the shortening of the supplier chains. Uh, not a word about transport, like somebody wants to import uh, more and more from other countries, Europe, or as previous speaker said, also beyond the uh, European Union. I'm fully missing. There's one study, the Ecoport uh, Civic Association has that study under the auspices of the Ministry of um, uh, the Environment, and they proved on sophisticated methodology because they compared Italian and Czech uh, apples on Czech market that the Czech apples had uh, three times less carbon footprint, and the basic difference is uh, transport. If you want to reduce the carbon footprint, let's support the production of such foodstuffs uh, as close as possible to the place of consumption. Pesticides uh, mentioned several times here. I do want to shout uh, the preparations for the production uh, uh, of uh, food in uh, Czech Republic. But I have one child here. We reduced that uh, by the year uh, 2016. Um, in like countries that are preferred as environment friendly. Uh, I want to show this image in relation to our uh, fruit growing uh, industry. What is uh, consumed for the protection? The Czech Republic, 41% are preparation that are registered in environmental uh, friendly agriculture or, or organic farming. Uh, we use two thirds of them uh, because we have a world to work. Uh, process of implement, which can implement uh, methods and uh, of uh, organic uh, methods in our usual production. So this shows the result. I, the reason why I say this is that in, in figures, Europe says reduce uh, the use of uh, preparations to a half. Uh, on a, why don't you make analysis how we are, our situation? We have been doing this without having uh, instructions from the center because we are responsible to consumers, to nature, to our business, uh, to etc. etc. Uh, even 10 years ago, with the managers and technology of uh, production, uh, we were nominated by the Czech side to inter for the International uh, Environmental uh, uh, Award uh, in Europe. Uh, so many uh, of these things are something that we normally implement in our practical life. We do not need uh, regulation. Yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is, uh, is a gift. Uh, we have to take lessons from history to avoid repeating history. The uh, mystery of tomorrow can be paraphrased uh, like uh, in the example of Green Deal, because we don't know. It may be still as a mystery for us. Some, somebody may have the impact studies. I haven't seen them. Maybe they will see uh, the, the light of the day. And so we can perhaps be able, uh, with the use of Czech examples, to fit the conditions uh, clearly prevailing in the Czech Republic. M definitely many of the things in the Green Deal are a challenge. We have to move toward protection of the environment, improving uh, technologies. Uh, uh, yes, but not uh, uh, like uh, defining figures without deep going analysis. That would make really no sense. Uh, so much I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention. Um, this uh, short uh, uh, excursion uh, to our uh, commodity. Thank you very much. A uh, question to Mr. Ludwig. How the actually uh, fruit uh, growing should adjust to new conditions in future? Of course, there are. Uh, there's a number of problems, and it's not uh, been possible to uh, mention all of them in such a short time. But I've mentioned some. There is trade, uh, economy itself. Uh, for us, the, there are also uh, climate changes. Uh, we must realize that uh, during the past years, we actually had a bad harvest uh, uh, due to uh, spring frosts, and there must be measures taken to mitigate these situations. Like it is also a hail. Um, 
and also some other measures like irrigation and so uh, each of those measures uh, is very demanding in, in terms of uh, investments, of course. And this will matter, uh, and of course, uh, and uh, stability uh, will depend on that. And also labor force is important, uh, sufficient labor force during the season because uh, fruit uh, growing is one of the agricultural branches which depends on voluntary work and the robotization and uh, other things that we see in other plants is uh, can be applied only very slowly in uh, fruit making because in top quality of fruit uh, um, we actually cannot do without human labor for a long time. A question to Mr. Ludwig, how long will it take to renew uh, the orchard uh, of fruit growing in Czech Republic uh, to get it to some optimum level uh, given the 25% sufficiency and how uh, has been possible for Poland to achieve such a big growth? Well, uh, you know, question, uh, returning to a level of uh, which was here 30 years ago, it would be around for 10 years and depends on economic condition. We have to realize two levels. One is extensions of the areas of the existing uh, fruit uh, growers who has the background, who have the knowledge, and for large uh, entities, it's a very specific uh, matter, and because it is a problem, with regard to the knowledge, know-how, uh, expertise, and you have, uh, have the, or also uh, the warehousing, uh, storage, etc., because uh, nobody perhaps buys it uh, from you directly. So it's a question for long years, long time, but Poland has quite different structure. They have small farms, five to ten hectares each. And they can't change the structure of fruit growing on ten uh, actual hectares. You, can, uh, you can't plant three basic uh, crops like we when we have uh, hundreds of uh, thousands of hectares. So actually it is possible for the government to support the small farms to do this. And why they have increased production? It, it was the Russian market that had demand for large and large volumes. And Europe prohibited export and adequately Russia prohibited exports to Russian to EU and so the surplus in Poland today and Russia has ensured its self-sufficiency. They have many new orchard and if the borders are opened up then the volume of export from Poland on any account will not be demanded by Russia. So it's actually due to the structure. How great is the lack of seasonal workers. So how can seasonal workers be uh, substituted? You mentioned that. Uh, yes, I mentioned that as a substantial point. There will be there will be a need for them in the coming years. So it's important. Unfortunately, the Czech uh, labor force is not interested uh, in that. So we need to create conditions for foreigners to come here to work. I, from food growers, I often hear the conditions in Poland are much uh, simpler and uh, mainly more flexible for um, uh, obtaining uh, foreign labor force than in this country. So it's quite fundamental things also for the years to come. And without labor force, uh, there can be development of uh, fruit uh, growing and also vegetable growing. Uh, let me just mention that uh, in the uh, context of the COVID-19 epidemic uh, in Western Europe, there have been uh, quite enormous damages with regard uh, to um, season, season early cr uh, vegetables and crop because seasonal workers could not come to the, those, to the countries. And the economic damage caused by this uh, uh, have been paid also by our money because we contribute to the European Union. So uh, this is just uh, for us to have an idea about uh, the relationships.